Greetings. This will be a video for the New Zealand region and looking at the earthquake symmetry and celestial interactions that are taking place prior to major events. Now I have found a direct correlation between Mercury and Sun, their conjunction and earthquakes across New Zealand. And we can also tie this into the lunar perigee or supermoon, also has a very strong correlation when combined. And just recently I've looked very closely at the Venus and Uranus connection, specifically their square, and it also has a very strong specific correlation across the New Zealand region and earthquakes, and I'll just show a few of them now. I spent quite a lot of time making this template, and it's about the major earthquake symmetry with not only the Mercury-Sun conjunction and also the lunar perigee, but also the Venus square Uranus aspect all occurring very close together. If we have a look at the Lake Roarapa earthquake of 1855, magnitude 8.2, one of the most powerful earthquakes in New Zealand's history. We have a look that the lunar perigee took place five days prior to the earthquake, and note that it was the supermoon of that year. The Venus Uranus square occurred on the same day of the earthquake, and two days prior to the earthquake, we had the Earth Mercury Sun planetary alignment. So it was just five days of separation from all of these events and the major earthquake. Now the second earthquake on the list is Nelson in February of 1893 had a 6.7 earthquake, a very rare earthquake for Nelson. Note that the lunar perigee took place nine days after the quake. Five days after the quake, Venus was squaring Uranus. And four days after the quake, Mercury was in conjunction with the Sun. So we can see again, the first earthquake of Lake Roarapa had five days of separation between all of these aspects. And the Nelson earthquake also had five days of separation between all of these aspects and the earthquake event itself. We're now looking at the next earthquake on the list, and that is the 1938 Southland earthquake, magnitude 7, striking the bottom end of the South Island, New Zealand. Now, the important aspect with this earthquake, it is slightly different to the rest. Now, this earthquake had the lunar perigee taking place eight days prior, the Earth-Mercury-Sun planetary alignment three days prior, but importantly, Venus and Uranus, they weren't at square, they were at opposition, just three degrees from their opposition at 177 degrees. And this video is just focusing on the square aspect, the 90 degree aspect. I just find it interesting how the same planets are showing themselves, and they have showed themselves with quite a lot more earthquakes, but I'll just focus on just this one. Now the next earthquake on the list is in 1985 in the month of September, where a seven magnitude earthquake struck the Comatic Islands region just north of New Zealand. If we have a look, the lunar perigee took place nine days prior to this event, and it is important because it is a supermoon, the third closest point of the moon for the year in terms of perigee. Venus and Uranus were at square eight days after the earthquake, and Mercury, Earth, Sun were in alignment three days prior. So again, we get this symmetry showing themselves again, and this time it was just north of New Zealand. Now moving ahead to 1990, where Danavirk in the North Island of New Zealand experienced a 6.3 magnitude earthquake. Just four days after the earthquake date, we had the lunar perigee. A day prior to the earthquake date, Venus was squaring Uranus. And Mercury was in conjunction with the Sun nine days prior to the earthquake. So we get this symmetry showing itself again, although slightly further away in symmetry. Now moving ahead to December of 2007, where offshore Gisborne experienced a very significant 6.7 magnitude earthquake. Now this earthquake was quite strong. It was widely felt. And it was quite significant for a number of reasons, but importantly, if we have a look at the lunar perigee on this day, it took place just two days after. Two days prior, Venus was squaring Uranus. And three days prior to this earthquake, Earth, Mercury, Sun were in alignment. So again, we get another five days of separation between all of these aspects showing themselves with an earthquake for the New Zealand region. We're now moving ahead to 2009 in July. A magnitude 7.8 earthquake struck near Dusky Sound. This was an extremely large earthquake that did have a tsunami warning associated, an extremely strong event. Now, if we have a look, this was also associated with the supermoon, which is important. The supermoon, officially the moon's closest approach to the Earth for the year, was taking place just six days after the earthquake. 14 days after the earthquake, Venus was squaring Uranus, but importantly, just one day prior, Earth, Mercury, Sun were in planetary alignment prior to this major event. And the next earthquake is the Darfield Canterbury earthquake of 2010, magnitude 7.1. The most important and fascinating aspect with this earthquake, it was associated with an Earth, Mercury, Sun planetary alignment taking place the previous day. And the following year, the next Earth, Mercury, Sun planetary alignment, we had another earthquake for Christchurch. And this occurred in February. 
where there was a substantial loss of life. But importantly, the Earth-Mercury-Sun planetary alignment can be attributed to both earthquakes in Darfield, Canterbury and also Christchurch. Now moving ahead to 2016, where a major 7.8 earthquake struck near Kaikauda, just northeast of Colverton. Now this earthquake was inland, and it did have a tsunami associated. Now this was an extremely large earthquake, it did have a loss of life, and this earthquake occurred on the exact date of the supermoon of that year. So an extremely interesting day, and also Venus and Uranus on the exact date was also at square aspect, and two weeks after we have the Earth-Mercury-Sun planetary alignment. So we get some very interesting symmetry, and I do feel that we are moving into a period in 2025, and also even more important would be 2026, where we get these converging celestial interactions all coming together again. Just looking ahead, there are two time frames of note that we get this convergence of these celestial interactions. In September of 2025, we get the lunar perigee on September 16. Four days after, we get the Venus-Uranus square aspect. And on September 14, we get the Earth-Mercury-Sun planetary alignment. So again, we get this very interesting convergence within six days of separation. So there may be a strong earthquake, potentially for the North Island in 2025 in the month of September. Now, I do feel that 2026 represents a much greater risk for a much larger earthquake for the New Zealand region, as we get the aforementioned planets and their influences all coming together on the, exactly the same day, which is quite amazing, July 13. Now we get a near supermoon, it will be the Moon's fourth closest approach for the Earth for the year on July 13, but Venus and Uranus will be in square aspect, and Earth-Mercury-Sun will also align on the same day. So I will make a future video on this, we'll have more detail, we'll have greater clarity as to possible areas of interest. In conclusion, I do feel that the month of September may represent a strong earthquake potential for the New Zealand region, around 6.5 or greater magnitude, so something to watch and the reason for this upload. Now we'll be providing more information in website newsletters, so I will leave the links in the description box for those interested, and there will be exclusive videos for members and subscribers as well on the website. Thanks for watching.